Hey guys, this is Angus, and welcome to a very special Maker's Muse. As you can probably tell, I'm not in my tiny room where I usually am, I'm not even in Perth. I'm at the Canberra Innovation Network, I'm here to talk to Erica from The Creative Element. Let's do it! So, so yeah, Erica pretty much does what I do, except with, like, better. <laughs> So what are you doing at the moment? I am making a little quick resin pour of a Stormtrooper helmet, like this one. That's cool. Um, this one's made out of aluminium. This one's iron. And I'm just about to make another one without a polished component in it, which is iron. But I've also already poured a gold yeah. infill inside there, so it'll actually have two colors in it. That's pretty sick. Yeah. So tell us about this awesome space, because you've got, what, you've got uh, minis, you got the Wanho, you got soldering stuff, little robots. They 3D printed? They are, they're 3D printed except the mechanics inside. That's too cool. Yeah, so like, how did you get this space and what do you do? Um, I basically asked for it. Uh, I work at a co-working space called Entry29 to start off with and one of the uh, head honchos, the CEO actually, said she wanted to make a space. So I said I'd run a makerspace for her if she gave me a room. So this is the room. This is the room. Which is pretty awesome. Got to fill it up with as much stuff as I wanted. And um, basically I get all of the startups and innovators uh, from the local Canberra community to come in here and they can do small scale manufacturing and prototyping with me. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Are you doing some, some stuff with kids soon? I am, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to start up an inventors club. So there's a couple of programs in Canberra. <laughs> where you can go and learn stuff over a weekend during school holidays, but there's nothing you can actually do after school during term as well. Hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do is make something so that kids have somewhere to go to actually play with robotics and hmm. chemicals and chemistry and explosions and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of schools have printers now, but the teachers tend to sort of be a bit unsure as to how to use them, especially for kids' individual projects. So that would be like the gap you feel, hey? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, a lot of teachers are a little bit scared yeah. of the new technology, so they kind of ignore it and just teach the basics. Mm. Um, whereas this, you already know the kids have the basic idea down and then you let them run wild and create their own stuff. That's so cool. Cool. So, Creative Element. Tell us a little bit, bit about that side of things. Okay, so the Creative Element basically is just saying the Creative Element of tech and science. Uh, it's a very male-dominated area, so mm. I'm just getting the fun back into it and actually making it a little bit more creative. Um, so doing things like jewelry and cool stormtroopers, making props and cosplay stuff. Um, basically just making tech fun and science a bit more fun. So I wanted an excuse to play with toys for a living. So I <laughs> Play with toys and get paid for it. Pretty much. It's the best girl. idea ever. Jeez, I'm so jealous. Do you want to give this a feel? It's, um, it's a 20 minute quick set resin, so it's actually already reacting. So it's, have a thermal oh, it's reaction. all warm as well. Yeah. That's so sweet. So this will set within 20 minutes, solid. Yeah. And you can decast in about 30 to 40 minutes. Oh, and you could probably rust up the iron powder too. You can, yeah. So, so there's cool. also another powder, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. I've actually got a big tub of it. I'll let you keep stirring because it's going off. No, that's all right. No? Okay. Nice. <laughs> So that's the um, solid copper powder. Oh wow. If you want to have a look at that. And yeah, you can yeah. actually oxidize that so you get like the uh, Statue of Liberty effect. Oh yeah, the green. It oxidizes greeny. greeny blue. Yeah, okay. And the iron will get uh, rust on it. That's so but, sweet. Um, the best part about this is actually these metals, once it's over a 50% ratio of metals, they start mm -hmm. taking on some of the qualities of the parent metal. So you can actually okay. start making parts conductive or rust or all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the more metal you can get into the mix, the better. Starts doing all sorts of cool, weird things. Yeah, because that's the thing, like, people, you can get filaments that have metal, like bronze fill and copper fill. Yeah. But the amount of pain you go to to print these things, you may as well just do the casting, hey? Absolutely. Um, what I found was the reason I do this is because I wanted to do the, the metal filaments. They cost about $80 for 750 oh, yeah. grams, yeah, it's, I think. Yeah, it's ludicrous. It's really expensive. This, um, this is a kilo of iron, and you only use a tablespoon or a teaspoon, really. But most things and it lasts forever and it's a fraction of the price and you actually get a much much smoother um, piece afterwards you can acetone smooth your abs parts and that gets rid of all the ridges so when you actually do your resin cast you'll have a really nice smooth finished piece sweet as well yeah so basically you can find erica's website which is thecreativeelement.com.au because we're in australia obviously 
Yes, Carlos. And this is Canberra, as I said before, so clearly it's the place to be because you can get spaces like this for free, um, especially for Erica. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. This has been awesome to be here. Um, I was actually here as part of a conference, an unconference called Junket, um, run by Junkie Media, which was lots of fun. So I'll be back in Perth really soon, and there'll be more regular 3D printing content on Makers Muse very shortly. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.